the good news is is that we can now demonstrate very conclusively that those agendas to create uh, and build green and meet affordable housing demand can be one and the same. We can show that the costs are only about two to four percent higher, uh, and that this premium tends to come down for developers as they gain experience. Uh, we can show that most of the marginally higher costs attributable to these measures uh, generate financial savings for low-income families, uh, to whom those savings definitely matter the most. And in other words, those techniques do pay, pay for themselves in an affordable context and usually very quickly. The goals is that federal leadership is essential uh, and that a national commitment to this agenda in affordable housing is sorely lacking. We need national bipartisan commitment to this effort. Uh, our 10-point plan lays out key elements of what we think that commitment should entail, and it's included in our statement. But in the broad strokes, a federal commitment of $5 billion a year over 10 years could deliver huge benefits across the board, 25 to 40 percent energy savings in up to 25 million residential units, up to 50 million tons of carbon dioxide emissions avoided, and hundreds of green jobs created, hundreds of thousands of green jobs created annually. This federal commitment is relatively modest if one considers that HUD, as Mayor Newsom mentioned, currently spends more than $4 billion annually just to pay utilities in very inefficient government-assisted properties. Uh, $5 billion is a very small share of the projected revenues that would be generated under proposals to curb greenhouse gas emissions currently under consideration in Congress and supported by all three major presidential candidates. Uh, the abstract attached to it argued that and I'll quote him, if humanity wishes to preserve a planet similar to that on which civilization developed and on which life on Earth is adapted, paleoclimate evidence and ongoing climate change suggest that CO2 will need to be reduced from its current 385 parts per million to at most 350 parts per million. I think that every generation uh, is called on in different ways to serve a, a, a higher purpose. Um, I think I'm the youngest person at this table, and I, I wanted to comment that my grandparents' generation rose up, faced the great war against fascism and totalitarianism. My parents' generation carried the torch of civil rights and social equality. I have very little doubt, personally, I'm 38 years old, I have very little doubt that the legacy of my generation is going to hinge on how we respond to these revelations that we're not living sustainably and that we're altering the environment. Um, and I feel very confident in saying that my generation and even those younger than us have truly embraced this as our cause and that we're ready to rise to this challenge. But bluntly, we are not yet running things. You are. And this is a problem uh, because the scale of this challenge is going to require bold action on a national level. And our generation does not want to be told to go shopping right now. We, we are ready to sacrifice as our parents and grandparents did. We want to do nation building, but we want to start at home by playing our part in creating the next prosperous American century. But somebody has got to call on us to do this by defining this as, as a test of our American character, uh, much as Lincoln and Franklin Roosevelt and John F. Kennedy and other great leaders did in their time. And we need it clearly articulated as a national priority, and we need the bar set very high, much higher than it has been, um, because timidity is going to squander our generation's resolve and resourcefulness.